I've got something interesting for you today. We've got our first wind tunnel results with the Cask Bambino, the classic aero helmet from the 2000s. If you remember, this helmet was made for Team Sky in around 2012. They first released this in 2012 and they brought this to the market as an adaptation of that classic long tail TT helmet that purportedly has the best savings. This has a stubby tail, perhaps the most stubby tail of them all. And what's the purpose of that? And the purpose of that is really to save drag when you're looking at a non-optimized position. For example, if you're looking down, you know, the back of the helmet with that long tail helmet would normally be up in the air. Or if you look from side to side. Now, here's the thing. I was in a wind tunnel with another athlete and we finished early. I had, we had one hour of time to play with. I didn't have all my stuff, but I did have my TT bike, the helmet, and I had my regular cycling, cycling jersey and bib tights. So I thought in that hour, we'd just put the Cask Bambino through its paces very quickly and have a look. Now, in particular, what I wanted to find out here is if it's true what they say about this stubby tail. Basically, is this a good innovation or not? So the testing I'm gonna show you is with the classic position on the TT bars looking forward, then staring at your stem, should we call, should we call that the Chris Froome approach? Staring at your stem. And then um, the final position is one that you read a lot about online, but it's very hard to do in reality. I personally have never mastered it, and that is the turtle neck position. The turtle neck is really retracting your head into your shoulders, crunching your shoulders together so that your head seems to disappear as much as possible from that frontal angle. That turtling, turtling, is probably the most aerodynamic position going forward. Okay, so once we've got those numbers from the mini wind tunnel test, we can do something clever. What I'm also gonna show you how to do today is to put that data into that awesome program that's Best Bike Split, bestbikesplit.com. And that will model the data on a hypothetical time trial course or on a, a course that we've already done and collected the data for. So if you're watching this as an upcoming TT rider and you've got some data on your CDA or rolling resistance, you can put that in Best Bike Split and get your data or savings in time or watts over that course. Now here's a couple of things to bear in mind. The actual CDA that I got on the day that isn't necessarily the one that's going to apply to you because how that um, helmet fits my body or fits the shape that I maintained on that day, that's very individual. Next, bear in mind I'm testing the first generation Bambino. Now they haven't changed the shape much, but they have changed the visor away from these old magnetic fixings to a, a semi-flippable visor. Secondly, um, they're also changing the design in the Bambino Pro. We'll come back to that in a second. But actually the big thing to bear in mind is about position on the bike. If you monitor rider's position during the bike, Although on short TT rides, we do pretty well at maintaining a fairly strict, crouched, you know, somewhat uncomfortable TT position. Let's say in your typical 10 mile, 16K TTs, you might, you might maintain that optimal TT position on the aero bars, head down, possibly turtlenecked for up to 90% of the ride. Once you extend that ride out to let's say 25 mile or 40K TT, the rider's ability to hold that stress position falls to 70, 75, 80%. And in an iron man distance, it falls really way down. Now, if you ask riders, ironically, they say, yeah, I was in the TT position the whole time. But when you measure it in an iron man, they're often in a TT position roughly 60, 65% of the time. So you've got to, plug, you've got to bear, that, bear that in mind when we work out the aero savings here. Now, the last caveat is about your. Your is to do with how the wind is hitting you. And we can test that in the, in the tunnel by having the um, your at zero and then multiple degrees. But to save time, and we were time crunched in the tunnel, we just did zero and 10 degrees yaw. All right, guys, let's see what we've we got. Found. The data from the wind tunnel, albeit an abbreviated test of the Cask Bambino at zero degrees yaw and 10 degrees yaw. What do we do with that data? Well, um, in order to analyze it a little bit more sophisticated way, what we want to do is plug, these, plug the numbers into the Fast Fitness Tips position by your CDA solver. So if you download and fire up this spreadsheet from the link below, you'll 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 see this on the screen now what this does essentially is to look across different positions that you might ride in a typical time trial for example looking forward head directly forward eyes forward on the road looking down at the stem turtlenecking uh, on the hoods and standing up on the hoods being out of the tt position climbing in the seat and standing obviously being understrained standing up a high gradient each of those positions has a different cda value now, if you've measured these in the wind tunnel yourself, great, that's, that's the gold standard. Measure them with your equipment. But most people don't go to the trouble of measuring in all of these positions. They might measure one or two. 
In addition, in the real world, you're not always riding into the wind directly at zero degrees yaw, meaning the, head, the wind is coming directly to you without any deviation on the angle. That would be only around 11% of the time, roughly, depending on wind conditions. We can actually calculate the different different CDAs across different your values. For example, just in broad categories, you know, 0, 5, 10, 15, and 20. And that is the rule that's followed in best bike split anyway. Now, obviously, it's going to get very complicated because we've got the positions across the top and we've got the yours down on the y-axis. In other words, we've got a table of position by your values or a, a mini array, a mini array, if you like. Now, to make matters simple for you, to simplify things, then you can take your data, which is gleaned from the wind tunnel, perhaps, you know, incomplete data. And we've got our looking forward zero degree you're finding for the Cask Mambino of 3.11. So let's plug that in to the spreadsheet. And the spreadsheet will make its best guess at the CDA at different positions. Like the standing position CDA is going to be a lot higher than the looking directly forward CDA. And it's also going to guess for you, based on some based on some data in the public domain, what your values is across different yours, basically 0, 5, 10, 15, and 20. Now, if you're curious about the mathematics of this, it's actually very, very simple. And I'm going to post uh, a video for you, for those that are curious, to show you how to make this spreadsheet yourself. It doesn't take long. It's just a 10-minute job to make this spreadsheet in Excel or Google Sheets. Uh, and it's a little lesson, if you like, in learning a few basic Excel tricks. But if you can't be bothered to look at the <laughs> how to make the spreadsheet, and I don't blame you if you can't, then just use this Fast Fitness Tips version. By the way, if you have data from these various positions, you can overtype in these cells your correct data. But if you only, for example, had one piece of data, for example, the CDA looking forward at zero your, enter it into that, that cell there, cell E13, and it will calculate the rest for you. So under results, what it's showing here is the CDA averaged across each position that you're likely to hold. And uh, there's an error here, actually. Um, these are estimates of what you're riding across your TT. So in a one hour TT, I'm actually estimating you would more likely ride 45% looking forward, 25% looking down, 10% with a turtle neck position, 15% on the hoods out of the TT position and 5% standing, all adding up to 100% positional possibilities. So out of those, you'll notice when we change that from 25 to um, 45, then it recalculates the average CDA at each year because it's varying the time you're spending because the time's gone up looking forward and the time's gone down out of the saddle. That's the beauty of this spreadsheet. It's giving you a calculation on the fly. And then if you just want one figure, if you wind, tu wind tunnel tested the Bambino at 0 0.311 looking forward at zero year, but you actually know you ride at a range of positions and a range of yours, it would actually average out at 0.341 across all yours and all positions. I'm sorry if that's complicated, but this spreadsheet will help you on that. And remember the how-to version of this video, how to make this spreadsheet behind the scenes, learn Excel if you like, that is available here. Okay, so we've got our, our basic figures there. And what we're going to do next is fire up Best Bike Split. So log into Best Bike Split. And the, the beauty of Best Bike Split is that you can... You can vary your courses, equipment, and bikes, even on a free account. You just can't have multiple versions stacked up at the same time. So let's let's um, take this hypothetical course, which actually exists in real life, and it's a semi-hilly, semi semi-mountainous semi time trial course of 38 kilometers, and typically would take around about an hour at 275 watts. Let's have a quick look at that. So this is some data that I already entered. Now, the key thing to, end, to bear in mind here, that my average power was 275.6 and my normalized power was 299.7, so almost 300. And the, the, the ride, if we just remember, the ride of 38.2 kilometers took one hour, three minutes and 20 seconds. You can see this is the, this is the course profile. In orange, this is the speed that you're going. In blue, that's the elevation. So you can see there's a quite a steep ramp up to the finish, but it starts quite steeply downhill. And in, in, in gray blue color, these blocks behind, this is the recommended power profile that Best Bike Split suggests. And that's the beauty of Best Bike Split. It will, it will take your average power that you want to hit, look at the course profile and give you the, the most optimized power delivery across the entire course on a sector by sector basis. If we go into my bikes, and then have a look at the baseline data here. So, so look here. So the baseline data is with a very aero setup on the TT bike. 
where the CDA is generated at various euro angles by best bike splits, starting at 0.738 uh, at a narrow euro angle, and you can you can read them off there. In the climbing, it falls somewhat. The aero efficiency falls because we're out of that T T, -T position to 0.3989. Okay, that's fine. So just just hang on to those figures if you like in your mind. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the Cas Bambino results and we're going to do that by updating this bike. We can change various parameters here, for example, changing the weight, changing the wheels, um, you know, changing the aero bars, changing the tires, changing the CRR, for example. But what we want to do today is to change the CDA based on our recent results. So we can either put in here our, um, for example, looking forward or looking down CDA, or we could put our overall CDA. So let's let's enter here our looking down at the stem because that's pretty much average for going along in a non-climbing position. So actually here we have point um, three four two one, and in the zero, well it's it's calculating it uh, all for us now. It's saying point three four zero seven, but we we found point three 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 six. The figures that um, Best Bikes Bear are trying to guess are actually very, very similar to our figures anyway. And then climbing, climbing, let's do let's do on the hoods climbing. So let's do 404. And once we do that, it's guessing the rest. And it's doing a pretty good job actually. 386 and 79. So let's change that one to 386. So now we've got our yours on the flat and also climbing. So click, click update bike. Congratulations, your bike's been updated. So now go back to my races and go into your course and remember that we haven't changed the watts, we haven't changed the weight, we haven't changed the, the bike. All we've done is change the helmet and entered those new CDA values. Okay, so everything else is exactly the same, same course. So now we can do update race. So Best Bike Splits are rerunning the simulation. And so here, so here are our results, guys. And the key thing is then, what's the what's the saving, guys? What's the what's the saving or loss, I should say? So we've got one hour six minutes and twenty four seconds. And if you remember, we had one hour three minutes and twenty seconds with our optimized setup. So if I run the Bambino on this circuit, then best bike split and the wind tunnel is telling me that you will lose three minutes four seconds, three minutes four seconds over the hour at the same power. And that, to summarize, is how to take your wind tunnel or even CDA data that's out there on public websites, apply it to your own ride and import, import the results into a race on Best Bike Split. I'll just, I'll just quickly show you one more thing, which is how to change the course. So if you go, go back to My Races and click Update This Race, and then here under uh, Update My Race Profile, you want to change the course here. So I'm going to now load up a specific course and this is, this is called the K41 TT time trial. Update race plan. Let's rerun it. So this is, re, this, is, this is rerunning that course with the Bambino. And on that course, which is a very fast, very flat 10 mile 16K TT, then Best Bike Split's given me a time of 25 minutes, four seconds. Okay, and that, that's with Cask Bambino. And go into update race plan, which is running the simulation. Remember, we had 25 minutes, four seconds with the Cask Bambino on a very flat course, 10 miles, 16 KTT. And the result with the full aero helmet, we 23 minutes, 26 seconds, 23 minutes, 26 seconds. So for me, with, a, a, let's say, ability to maintain a fairly strict TT position, and that would vary on depending on your course and your weather conditions, it looks like the Cask Bambino isn't likely to be my the best helmet, guys. It looks like I will lose 1.5 minutes over a short 10 mile 16K TT. Okay, that's a lot of data and a lot of stuff to bear in mind about the wind tunnel, about the CDA, about uh, best bike split. But my take home message is, yeah, the Cask Bambino first generation, the old school first generation, is about mid table really. If you're going along and you move your head a lot, if you're looking up, down, side to side, it's probably a good choice. It's probably in the top, in the top quartile of, of helmets that you could try. However, if you're pretty good at riding in that strict TT position, it's either mid-table or lower mid-table. In fact, overall, as a TT helmet, even for those that are fairly good at maintaining that position, but let's say often look at the stem, cue the Chris Froome link here, uh, if you're one of these people who's constantly looking at your stem, you might well find that the Bambino's, even, even with the stubby tail, is not the best helmet for you. 
which is why Chris Froome himself has gone with Team Sky to the Bambino Pro for 2016. The Bambino Pro has an elongated stubby tail so that it fills that void between the back of the head, the neck and the shoulders a little bit more precisely. So there you go guys, a nice little test of Cask Bambino. Is this the best helmet for you? You decide. Over to you guys.